everyone. How is everybody doing tonight? It is hot out there. It is also Riolu Day. Also, we've got fireworks going off outside, so if you hear any loud pops, that is probably why. Um, please excuse the, um, whoops. Please excuse the um, stuff on the screen. I was doing some testing earlier and it looks like things didn't get updated. So let's see. We are going to play some more Arcade Spirits, the new challengers. And I am honestly still trying to figure out what I want to do for JRPG July. Right now, I am leaning towards doing Final Fantasy VI because check out my t-shirt that is the official uniqlo final fantasy 6 t-shirt oops Okay, so we are at Max Weff Prime, and Loxley and Sox are hanging out, and he has just invoked the name of his Iris, which is Marion. Forsooth, what noble transgressions must we perform in the name of king and country? Against all enemies, I shall stand true, my liege. Huzzah! Uh, Marion, you don't need to lay it on quite that thick with the gimmick. She's enthusiastic. Hey, listen. Hello, Marion. I don't think we've met. I'm Iris. Hey. I, too, am Iris. I have grown and adapted to meet the needs of my user. And besides, it's fun. Huzzah! What ho! I figured all the Irises knew each other already. Oh, we have a bare-bones communal meeting space within our cloud, but generally we're busy with our own users. And all of our data is encrypted, even from each other, to ensure user privacy. Nary a secret shall spill from my lips, my lord. Shall we? Now, let's get to work. You see the representative over there in the blue jacket? Spotted. I need you to distract him while I plug Marion into their network. Whatever you can do to keep his attention engaged shouldn't focus on you. But you can't simply make a big dramatic scene. Nothing that will draw the attention of Mac's security enforcers. Just hold his focus. Keep his focus, don't start trouble, got it. I'm going to need at least three uninterrupted minutes. I'll rendezvous you with you back at the indie game area when done. Ready? Ready. Loxley tugs his hood up and over to conceal his features as he blends back into the crowd. Okay, be charming, be distracting. How do I want to approach this situation? Okay, so we have three options. We can approach as a member of Future Forward, pose as a Fight Shack reporter, or play at being some rando gamer. So we're gonna roll to see. One and two is gonna be a member of Future Forward, three and four is a Fight Shack reporter, and five and six is a rando, and we rolled one. So already we have that working against us. Burying a lie and the truth makes sense. Loxley may not want our name involved in this in case things go badly, but I think I can play the part well enough to avoid that. Excuse me. Hmm? Hello, welcome to the palace, the premier center for family entertainment, esports action, and more. Do you have any questions? I'm Sox, manager for Future Forward. We're an up and coming esports team, and I'm curious what the palace has to offer regarding competitive play. Yep, as Loxley slides up to do an open USB port on a display unit, I can see him wince as I drop my actual name. Might not have been the best choice, but I can make this work. Oh, we host tournaments weekly at all locations. Fist of Discomfort 2, Fast Car 7, head-to-head -head speedrun competitions, and Super Fantasy Planet. Not bad. We focus on FFOD 2, but our team has diverse interests. Ah, uh, by any chance, are you interested in sponsoring a young team such as ours? Look, I can't completely rely on Loxley and Rhapsody to solve this one. I need to check all the available options. Actually, there may be opportunities available. We're looking for fresh new content creators, ones willing to help us promote our latest innovation. Tell me, do you enjoy redemption games? Redemption, is this a religious thing? 
games that earn tickets to be redeemed for valuable prizes. The palace has the best redemption games in the world. Okay, one thing I gotta know is like, you ever go to Dave and Buster's or Round One and you see like the friggin' kitchen appliances that they have for redemption? Does anybody ever get those? I mean, you probably have to save your tickets for months and months in order to get them. Honestly, the only reason why I really go to Round One is for the food and the karaoke. Also, the crane games. Joysticks and buttons are the past. What fun is a game that doesn't earn you any rewards? But the palace feels there's room for even further innovation in this play space, switching things up to make the games even more exciting. What if, and follow me on this journey, the rep puts an arm around a shoulder while making a sweeping gesture as if gazing towards the bright horizon of tomorrow, and nearly spots Loxley in the process, so I quickly speed it up. I'm already interested. No need to embellish. What do you got for me? What if, instead of exchanging tickets for prizes directly, you could exchange tickets for... For... A loot box. Ah! Oh! A loot box. Oh my god, they are scraping the bottom of the barrel. What? What? We're replacing all the prizes in the palace with the loot boxes. There could be anything in there. A rare collectible, a brand new phone, keys to a sports car, perhaps. The more you play, the more loot boxes you earn. And with our new Palace Battle Pass, esports players can earn free loot boxes for participating in our competitions. Why, you might even earn cosmetics! <sighs> like eyeshadow and lipstick? Well, yes, if you choose to trade tickets for one of our Pink Gamer Princess loot boxes, but I meant more like customization options for your profile on thepalacearcade.com. But wait, there's more! Rare drops from our esports themed loot boxes like the Monster Box or the Leap Crate can earn you boosters! These are digital codes you can use to gain bonuses in the games you play. More lives! More power! A true advantage over the competition! What's more? Some bo Oh my god, they are- They have- They have scraped completely through the bottom of the barrel, and they've hit bedrock. What's more, some boxes may include a non-fungible token. Yes, sir, you can't fung these tokens, not one bit. Who knows how crypt valuable this crypto magic could be? Loot boxes, battle passes, and NFTs are the future. The palace is at the forefront of what gaming should be. What? I rolled a five. We're making it stop time, Sage. Don't worry. Okay, hang on. Is this a joke? Are you actually running a casino for children or an arcade? And not even offering prizes, but a chance at a prize? Who in their right mind would ever want to play a game like that? This is quite possibly the worst thing I have ever heard in my life, and I can't believe you're seriously going through with such a ridiculous scheme. First of all, it's promoting gambling to children. Let's be damned clear about that. You are promoting gambling to children. Second of all, I have a sincere doubt your precious loot boxes are going to have super expensive prizes inside. No doubt you'll scoop dollar store bargain bins for your fodder. And you're seriously putting blockchain nonsense in this? How many forests do you plan to gleefully burn down generating enough power to make that happen? Finally, the idea that an arcade is where you go to get stuff and that playing games for fun is old and busted? That's bull- I can't believe your ridiculous plastic palace of hot garbage is still standing. It should have been buried in a shallow grave alongside Deco Nami. Dot, dot, dot. I mean, um, tell me more. Look, if you're not into it, that's fine. But you don't have to be a jerk about it. I'm just earning a living out here, okay? Thanks for your time, but I've got real customers to attend to. Fortunately, as the rep turns away from me, Loxley just barely manages to unplug and walk away before being spotted. I need a shower. But for now, I loop Black back around to the indie section to reconvene with Loxley. He practically slips into existence from between two shadows, appearing suddenly in my path. Tally ho! Mission accomplished, I dare say. We have their corporate internal memo archive regarding the new loot box systems. You want Loxley's outfit? Eh. Well, do you mind wearing a fanny pack around your shoulders? I mean, that's the new way people are doing it now. I hope there's something more memorable in there than a bunch of incredibly stupid marketing ideas. Oh, there's some juicy details. Marion, summarize. 
Certainly, I have no less than 30 spreadsheets detailing the exact odds for prizes within each line of loot boxes, along with details on how they will precede the top-end prizes in boxes designated to be won by palace employees only. So, nobody gets a sports car unless they already worked for the company. There are also plans to hire influencers and content creators to unbox loot online, which will likewise be preceded with high-quality items along with notes to make sure these hired social media stars do not disclose their paid sponsorship. Which is... illegal. It's illegal, right? Absolutely. This is huge, Socks. I'd hoped that Dekonami's run-in with the law could have shut down the palace, but this... this could do it. Hmm. The question is, what do we do with this information? It was obtained illicitly. They have plausible deniability. How can we torpedo their efforts at poisoning arcade culture? All right, three options. And we rolled a three, so we're going to spread it far and wide along with an anti-palace manifesto. I'm sure you're adept at anonymously leaking material online for maximum impact, yes? So let's do that. Go directly to the people and get our side of the story out of here. Add on a screed about how the palace must be stopped for the good of arcades everywhere. I may be an arcade newbie, but even I could tell this plan is absolute poison. It has to be stopped. Indeed, tis a tolerable thought that arcades everywhere may embrace this loot box model once the biggest franchise in the world adopts it. A bold if move. we can work up their potential customers with outrage, and the internet is nothing if not an outrage engine, it may halt loot boxes in their tracks. I mean, surely gamers as a whole would rise up against this, right? We wouldn't simply get token protests while the mainstream embraces it and normalizes it. Stands to reason, I can't see fully bait game experiences with microtransactions ever taking off to become the dominant monetization model in any sane timeline. <laughs> no, no, that could never happen. It would be absurd to even consider. Far too absurd. <laughs> heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh
Eventually, we catch up with Rhapsody, fresh from mingling with all the major names in FOD and signing autographs for their fans. Perfect. Everything's coming up socks. The stage is all set for your interview with her. By her? Who exactly do you mean? And someone in a white jacket pushes on past the two of them to stand front and center! Hey champ, been looking forward to this. It's Queen Bee! What? Queen Bee? As in founding member of the Four Heavenly Kings Queen Bee? The one and only. Queen Bee winks and blows an overly exaggerated air kiss in my direction. Even a PC junkie like me knows Queen Bee reigning monarch of the competitive arcade scene. Her team, the Four Heavenly Kings, rarely go for the big payday trophies that he Team P2W does, but every member of the team is an absolute powerhouse of veteran skill. And if Rhapsody and Loxley arranged a meeting with her, then... Wait, is 4HK looking to sponsor Future Forward? Not a chance. I'm more like the fiery hoop of death you gotta jump through to prove yourself to your new sponsor. Oh, so you're asking for a challenge. So, who's our new sponsor if it's not you? Where's the fun in telling you if I can't tease you about it first? A real serious Sam type, aren't you? I should have probably been expecting that the way Loxley and Rhapsody have been pointedly not telling me all day. Look, I'm doing this as a favor for someone who wants to know if you've got the same passionate spirit they have. You just have to prove yourself. Sure, sure. In what way? <laughs> what better way to test your potential than to fight us? The four f***ing heavenly kings. Right here and right f***ing now. Um, it could be Ari, but I also wonder if it could be Hamza. Wait, you want to have a match against Future Forward? Absolutely. But you'll destroy us. I mean, you're 4HK. Don't give up before the match has even started. Gods can bleed. But this isn't about winning or losing. It's about your skill, your strategy. I want to see your spirit. That's how you will be judged. Okay, so let's say we agree to this match. Where exactly are we going to play? Queen Bee flashes me the wildest grin and simply points towards the main stage for Max. Um, I don't think it's Ari just because of the fact that we set Ari's uh, pronouns to they, them. On stage, seriously? Sink or swim. Sink I don't do things half-assed. I pulled some strings to make this happen. We go live in five minutes, right before finals. We're the fire before the storm, baby. A tried and true exhibition match. Oh, five minutes, and isn't it a calm before the storm? You know what I mean. I want to see how you perform under pressure. You ready? All right, we rolled a one so certainly thank you for this opportunity and may the best team win <laughs> you bet i'm really looking forward to this it's a great opportunity and i'm honored to be able to challenge you may the best team win i'm all fired up and you'll need a teammate of course because well i've already got one and that's when a second member of the four heavenly kings makes his appearance a veteran player from japan possibly the greatest who ever lived known to some as kami but to others as the demon Konbanwa, an ambush match by two of the best players in the scene, in front of thousands of people. We are doomed. We are doomed. But this is the path forward. If we want to carry on as a team, we have to impress the four heavenly kings. So, that's what we're going to do. As Red Partner, I don't have time to call up anyone else on the team. We hit the stage in two minutes, so I've got to work with what I have. My partner will be... Okay, it's either Loxley or Rhapsody. And it looks like we have chosen Rhapsody. I rolled a four. Rhapsody, will you be able to break from your casting duties to play with me? My schedule is clear and I wouldn't miss the chance to take on the legendary Queen Bee. Wait a sec, didn't you cast my last match as a member of L7 back at the Funplex? I'm impressed you remembered it was an intense match. Hope you were taking notes because you're going to need them to defeat us. Time's up, Socks. Here we go. This is it. The hardest challenge of my pro career to date. It's like asking a junior league softball player to single-handedly beat all of the New York Mets, but win or lose, I'm going to do my best, and that will have to be good enough. On emerging through the curtain and onto the stage, I'm nearly blasted backwards by the roar of the crowd. 
Colored lights swing back and forth as Future Forward emerges alongside two of the four Heavenly Kings, and the audience is hyped to see this happen. The following is an exhibition match scheduled for one round. Making their way to the game, please welcome from the four Heavenly Kings, Queen Bee and the Demon! Queen Bee soaks up the crowd's applause, pumping a fist in time to the 4HK chant to keep them excited. And their challengers, the hottest rising stars of the esports scene, it's Socks and Rhapsody of Future Forward! Did... Did they just cheer more for me than they did for the four heavenly kings? Competitors to your stations, it's time! I pull out my trusty $8 beige keyboard, plugging it in, while Queen Bee and the Doomin produce expensive, professional-grade fight sticks. Ones that we could afford with a new sponsor. Okay, okay. Figure out a strategy, quick. Queen Bee's picking Silent Blade, and the demons already queued up Sensei. Good. I know what their game plan is. From what I know about them, Queen Bee plays an aggro Silent Blade, attacking relentlessly. I can defend against her. Meanwhile, Rhapsody will have to overcome the demons turtling up in defensive play as Sensei. Good. Good. Nothing we haven't dealt with before. That's all the time I have for strategy as the air horn signals the start of the match. For the future of Future Forward, I need to do my best. We are going to select winning this game, by the way. Here are your winners! Socks and Rhapsody of Future Forward! We won. We won a match against the four Heavenly Kings? Well fought. You've proven that you got what it takes. I stand there in shock as Queen Bee grasps my hand and raises it high while the crowd chants. F, 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 F. Whoa. We've had high profile wins before, but this one in front of such an enormous crowd all chanting for our glory. This is the biggest moment we've had to date. This is what being a winner feels like. Give it up for our challengers, everyone. That was one hell of a fight. They're the future of FOD. Look to them for who we should all be in this community. Remember this day, it will resonate forever. The crowd bursts with excitement as we head backstage. Valkyrie of Team P2W glowers at us while we pass on by because we just upstaged the upcoming main event fight completely. Just a bit of icing on the cupcake of our success. Backstage things are ramping up for the finale of the Blastics Blade Joysticks Invitational, with staff members rushing about to prepare the stage for the last fight of the day, meaning we can loiter off to the side without being bothered. A good moment to reflect on what transpired. That was amazing. Wow, that was a great match. I still can't believe we actually got to show our skills against Queen Bee and the Demon. I'll never forget this moment. We really kicked from ass, didn't we? And against some of the best players in the world. Pinch me, Socks. I can't believe we actually did it. You were amazing. You did so well. Heck, I even feel proud of what I accomplished, too. And beyond all that, we got a sponsor. Speaking of our sponsor, isn't it time you settled that business? Probably, yes. I'll leave you to it, then. And thanks for choosing me to be your partner in this match. It means the world to me. I'm happy to have fought by your side, Rhapsody. See you soon. Even backstage, we can hear the thunderous echoes of the cheering audience. It's almost a shame we aren't able to watch the finals or play in them, but our match with Queen Bee and the Demon of the Four Heavenly Kings was certainly a boost for my mood and career. But one piece of the puzzle hasn't quite clicked into place, and maybe Queen Bee can help with that. Hey QB, now that the match is over, care to tell me more about this mysterious team sponsor who's interested in us? I'm still confused how someone as prestigious as you could be our tryout match. This new sponsor must be a heck of a mover and shaker to have an interest in the likes of us. Don't sell yourself short. You're young and just getting started. But everybody starts somewhere. This? This is your starting line. Reminds me a lot of my own starting line, in fact. There were a lot of setbacks. Losses. A fucking lot of losses. I started out as a baby FOD streamer, barely able to crawl up those ranks. But I didn't 
give up. Never f***ing give up. I worked hard. Played hard. And eventually, L7 invited me to join their team. I did so, thinking I had finally made it. But it was just one more step to get to where I am today. A lot of shit went down when I was in L7. It eventually led up to my humiliating loss against the demon. I remember reading about that on the FOD forums. Even though it was a smaller unknown venue, the demon traveled all the way from Japan to fight against Queen Bee. Queen Bee lost the match against the demon, but then, in a twist of fate, he ended up inviting her to join 4HK. And now they're both on the most well-loved and talented team in the scene. But even in that loss, there was a win. That loss changed everything for me. Without that singular moment, I wouldn't be here. Standing next to you, offering you this sponsorship. So it was herself. So why you? I've been exactly where you are right now. And I want to make that difference for others who I see myself in. Well, not to mention, Loxley and Rhapsody told me all about your last sponsor backstabbing you. And I like to make sure we stick our middle fingers up at big corporations. <laughs> <laughs> As for who your actual sponsor is, here, let me introduce you. And that's when a fairly unassuming looking person wanders up to me nodding in respect. Socks, or should I say Mick Sydney Moore? How formal do you want to handle this? Wait, aren't you? They slipped me a business card with a symbol of a pixel art criddle and a neon heart. I know you called it, it's just weird how the uh, pronouns got missed. Ari Cater, at your service, owner of Starcade. You're the one who made Starcade? I'm a PC junkie and even I know about that arcade. You're the ones that Deco's Palace tried to torpedo, right? You're famous. Got it in one. We're the arcade that slew the beast known as Deco Nami. Thank you, thank you. Please hold your applause. We know we're awesome. But that's old business. Today, I want to talk about new business, specifically sponsoring Future Forward. So you're the mystery sponsor that sicked the four heavenly kings on us. Yeah, but honestly, the match was Queen Bee's idea. She loves a dramatic show. I was just going to approach and just say hello, but it's hard to say no to the queen, you know? Loxley and Rhapsody told me all about Blade Joysticks backstabbing you. I don't like it when people step all over someone's dreams, so I agreed to help. Seriously? That's great! A major arcade chain sponsoring us would go a long way! Exactly. We have enough money for side projects like this, and your success is our success. We're a pretty strong arcade thanks to the decisions we made in founding it. This may be what we both need to go over the top and become legendary. There's one condition on this offer, though. In one month, there's going to be a big FOD2 exhibition event happening at Pengi Paradise. You know, the cheesy penguin-themed family amusement park? Never been there myself, but I'm aware of it. You'd have to be dead or comatose not to know about Pengi. I want you representing Starcade at the charity event. We're going to be raising money for Child's Play, an organization that donates toys and games to children's hospitals. That's another real-world reference! Plus, if you do this, you get another shot at Team Play to win. I figure you'd want a chance to beat your rival in a public setting, am I right? Of course, it's a great opportunity. I want to see your passion on display, just as it was against Queen Bee. I want to see your burning spirit as you take on your rival. For the longest time, my spirit was empty. I sat there unfeeling as life kicked me around. I'd assumed the Cater family was cursed and that this is just the way of things. It was all bull of course. There was never a curse. But it took the power of my friends to help me see that. Now, I've got the chance to pay that forward and help someone else find their dreams. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so a pile of money from Starcade isn't a heartfelt gift of wisdom, but it'll help you get to where you need to be. This is your moment, your dream, your hope, and your spirit, all united as one. I want to see you fight for what you believe in. But win or lose, above all, I want you to take this chance to understand the path in front of you. I know a thing or two about how challenging it can be to find your way. I realize I'm being overly poetic, but no better way to say it. Use this opportunity and find your path. Rise up. All right, so we rolled a one. Don't worry, I'm going to chase my dreams just like you did. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I understand, and I'm going to do my best to make you proud. I've got a dream of championship gold and so much more. I want to support Future Forward. I want to support my friends. Good attitude to have. I have no doubt you'll succeed on all fronts. I think it's settled then. 
With that, they hand over a contract tucked away neatly into a folder for later review. Oh, they did get Ari's pronouns, right? Run that by your lawyer, and if everything looks good, sign on the dotted line and zip it along. I, uh, don't have a lawyer. No problem, have Iris find you one. If she needs help finding a lawyer with an esports focus, my Iris can help yours. Hooray! Iris is, I Ari's Iris is legendary in the Iris Collective. This'll be a lot of fun. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got business before Max closes down for the day. I'd love to hang and chat or play some games, but alas, adult responsibilities, they are a thing. Yeah, tell me about it. As manager of Future Forward, I'm always dealing with one thing or another. We'll have to swap war stories sometime. I... A soft beep beep from Ari's Iris grabs their attention. I'd better take this, sorry. Good luck at the charity show match, okay? My love, what's up? Of course, I made sure to order us the new Showtime Stage Scream. No, I didn't try it out yet, and yes, you know why. Aw, uh, Ari is calling Teo. Teo, I promise we can play together as soon as it's shipped out and set up. Fair? Good. I love you too. Bye for now. And as our new sponsor fades into the crowds of Max, I just hope beyond hope I can make them proud of us next month. My first Max. Who would have thought it ended up how it did? At the beginning of today, we lost one sponsor, and yet by the end, we gained a new one. A sponsor who believes in us. We fought the legendary 4HK, and the crowd loved us. We're even going to be part of the FOD2 exhibition event happening at Pangy Paradise. This is more than I ever expected to have when I first set out to chase esports glory. Strangely, the championship itself is actually furthest from my mind. I want to do this for the glory, sure, but there's more to this ride than that, right? Future Forward, all my friends. They're counting on me, and for them, I want to make this happen. I won't let them down. Not now, not ever. All right, level complete. You've cleared level four of Arcade Spirits, the new challengers, victory. Let's take a look at your scores. Grace seems to be com very comfortable around you. You're a pretty flexible person so far, not bad. Also, you've scored 23,200 points. Nice, keep talking with people and your score will go up, up, up. Would you like to change your personal metadata at this time? Nope. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level five? All right, we are now on level five, the new meta. Yeah, I think, I mean, I know you were asking about why uh, Punchy78 uses VHS equipment. That's probably What's his up, stick, it's, it's his Punchy trademark. Punchy78 here with Fight Shack News, all the fighting that's fit to post. Max has come and gone, and months of Pro Tour events are in the books. We're getting closer and closer to the main event. But all eyes are on tomorrow's charity show match at Pengi Paradise, where everybody's favorite laundromat crew takes on their arch rivals in Team P2W. In their first encounter, the underdogs failed to defeat the veterans, but that was months ago. Are they strong enough to win the runback match? With a cool million in charity money on the line, not to mention the glory of a major spotlight event, the entire scene will be watching. It all comes down to this, friends. Be sure to tune into the Fight Shack stream tomorrow morning. Like, share, subscribe, punch the bell, and get ready! Oh boy, that music. It is the distant future year of 20XTX, and we are about to enter the crucible of fate. These are the moments that break lesser competitors, high-stress combat scenarios, the kind that melt willpower like a candle under a blowtorch. Where are we are now on this war-torn battleground, there is only the absolute focus of a soldier. Victory or death. There are no other options. Ooh, look at all those adorable penguins! Balloons everywhere, and music in the streets, and children laughing, and people in colorful costumes dancing and singing. I just love Pinky Paradise. It's the silliest place on earth. Trade my gold to visit. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's not quite as intense as predicted. It's nice. 
very cheery. Nice. Just nice. If you aren't having the funnest time of your life at Pinky Paradise, you're probably dead. It's Joy Incarnate. Yeah, like I said, it's nice. Well, she wasn't wrong. The place is kind of nice. Pengi Paradise. I've never actually been here before, despite it being the most popular amusement park in the world. Well, the best one which wasn't mouse-based. Thrill rides, kitty rides, educational rides, rides upon rides, as well as food and drink from the four corners of the globe. And the nightlife? Once the kids were tucked away in their hotel beds, fancy restaurants and dance clubs awaited adults looking to get the foot run rolling. Too old to eat a metric ton of cotton candy and go on high speed thrill rides. I'm gonna eat, puke, and then eat some more and puke some more. Or you could just ride the gentle rides that don't make you lose your lunch. Uh, hey now, I'm a professional theme park crasher, and professionals have a standards. Greasy food and stomach turning action go hand in hand. We have a charity show match tomorrow, remember? Could you maybe not get violently ill before showtime? I promise nothing! Now, let us relish in this pre-packaged unit of delight, served up by Pengi's highly litigious corporate masters. Smile, laugh, thrill, chill, look, listen, kneel, pray. Hmm. I wonder what shenanigans I could get up to in the middle of a media empire's personal playpen. No, no shenanigans. We're here for a ding-dang charity event, people. Best behavior. I want everybody having fun and enjoying Pengi Paradise, absolutely. But don't forget, we've got a match tomorrow. We're doing well on the Pro Tour, some wins, some losses, but it never hurts to shore up our image a bit as winners, right? So, by all means, go out there and have a good time. Just like, don't get arrested, or injured, or killed, and tomorrow we'll kick some butt. Exactly, let's be safe and careful while we have fun. And definitely have fun. I love this place. I can't wait to share it with you all. I am caught up in this wave of mandatory excitement and unable to object to the notion of having fun. Hooray. Huh, normally I'd be way more fixated on winning this thing, but I'm only kind of fixated. We've tasted victory and defeat on the road to this moment. Hard to swallow the losses, but the wins balance out my mood swing. And besides, it's just a charity exhibition match. We're in good shape for the Pro Tour. Why worry? We'll be fine. Everything is fine. Okay, we've all got all day and night to have some fun in Pengi Paradise, the silliest place on earth, trademark all rights reserved. So, go have a blast, then get plenty of rest and be ready for tomorrow's event. Future forward, let's do this! With good cheer and smiles all around, the group breaks up, running all over the park to have some fun. I move to join them when... a buzzing from my phone grabs my attention. Iris, something up? Computing. I wanted you to know that I've been researching Pengi Paradise to optimize the fun you'll be having today. That's... helpful? I don't think I need to worry about optimal fun, though. Ah, but in my calculations, I've come to an intriguing conclusion. Pengi Paradise is actually the perfect scenario to allow love to bloom. What? Sure, by day, it's rides and snacks and kitties constantly underfoot, but by night, this place is alive with romance. Did you know that there are over 5,000 proposals at Pengi Paradise a year? And 2,000 of them are at the famous La Penguine restaurant alone. Not to mention the special honeymoon packages, which you can buy starting as low as $99, which include your private candlelight dinner, personalized jewelry, and your names and fireworks. <laughs> Aw, how cute! Uh, Iris, I'm not rushing into marriage while I'm here. Oh, I wasn't trying to insinuate that, Socks. I'm just saying that Pengi Paradise really brings out the love. I know you wanted to play things cool at first and let the romance build slowly, organically. You're close with your team and feelings are running high. Tonight is the perfect night to bring that slow burn to a climax. Seriously? Seriously, I wouldn't joke about something like this. Love blooms differently for so many and no matter your choices and your path, I support you. What do you think? Are you ready? If you are, I'm ready to help. She's not wrong, actually. If I want this, the perfect opportunity lies before me. Granted, we're also less than 24 hours away from one of the biggest matches of our career, but when opportunity knocks, you listen, right? So, moment of truth. How do I feel about this? Okay, so, um, I'm just going to check on this one because we've pretty much already locked in, um, Grace at this point. 
You think this is my first rodeo? I'm one step ahead of you, Iris. I have an evening of romance planned out already. Golly, you're all fired up. Great to hear. Sometimes we Irises worry that we're overly pushy about seeking love and happiness, you know? It's better when people choose love and happiness themselves. Exactly. I've been waiting for this moment. It's been months, but I think we get along great <sighs> to ask someone out on a date. Home, home, tell me. I have to know. My anticipation subroutines are tingling with excitement. Either that or your battery's dying. You told me at Max that you were interested in Grace. Is that still true? That's right. It's Grace. Hooray! I'm so glad you found someone special to you. But I don't want you to feel locked in, okay? If you change your mind between now and tonight, follow your heart. I'll keep my heart open to go with whoever feels right. Yes, whatever makes you happiest. Okay. Sounds like you're all set then. Go out there and have some fun. Iris, offline. Now to focus on why I'm here, having some fun at Pengi Paradise. I could go hit a ride all by my lonesome, but screaming down a roller coaster is more fun when it's not just you holding on for dear life. So, instead, I think I'll track down one of my friends and tag along for a bit. But who first? Alright, so... Rhapsody and Zapper, Loxley and Domino, Jinx and Grace, and Bunny. So let's do a roll. So from left to right is going to be one, two, three, four, and we rolled a three, so we're going to talk to Jinx and Grace. It's a big park, but I've got a pretty good idea of where Grace will be, considering it's all she was talking about all the way down here. I'm pretty sure nobody on our flight will forget it either, given the intensity of her gleeful ramblings. And yep, there I go. They spot Jinx's rented three-wheeled mobility scooter, scooter parked right outside Grace's destination of choice. Mr. Moopy's Magic Shop, where she's busy dropping the wealth of a small nation into the enchanted coffers of this magical world of consumerism. Woohoo! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's a real Mr. Moopy wizard hat! Look at the stitching, the sheen of the felt, the way it even has the tiny notch where the Shadow King nearly cut off his head in Mr. Moopy's Misadventure in Moonlight. At risk of immediately being forced to binge three seasons of the anime, I haven't seen that one. What? Oh, we need to fix that. The instant we get home, we're... Ugh. Yes, yes, that is what I feared would happen. I wander past excited children wearing nearly identical haps making my way into the magic shop. Grace is checking out the wide array of wands on offer while Jinx sort of loiters, hoping this experience will be swiftly over. But that doesn't seem likely. So, Moopy, huh? Hey, Socks, look, look! They've got wands from all 12 of the major guilds and even the 36 minor ones. There's 48 of those things? Seriously? I thought there were like six or seven at most. Damn. Oh, crap, here we go. Um, you don't know all the what? guilds, but that's like the core foundation of the entire show. I mean, surely you've heard of a few, right? I think so. I mean, it's not hard to have a passing knowledge of movie ever since that anime went big. While the Pinky brand is so pervasive worldwide it's like background radiation, the Mr. Moopy brand has only been hot for five years. Ever since the 30-year world record was toppled by Percy Sinclair, the media took an interest in that old 1980X arcade game. Oh wow, so Percy really did, um, topple that world record. Including an anime company owned by Pengi's corporate masters. Smelling money, they developed a hot run of animated adventures about Mr. Moopy and his wizard friends doing battle with monsters and undead across the world. Conveniently enough, they sell a variety of costume pieces for the guild, so you can cosplay as the one you most identify with. Me, I'm totally a sphinx Adele because I'm so very clever and I love puzzles, see? Because Sphinx. Because that's what Sphinxes do. Yeah, I figured that much. I'd say I'm a lot like Miss Stella, the young sphinx Adele prodigy. She's got a big heart even if it sometimes gets lost along the way. I wonder what guild Jinx would be in. None, because magic isn't real. Aww. Aw, come on, it's fun to make believe. I bet you'd be an Indominus because of your iron will. You stand true and strong against those who would hurt your friends. Can't argue that. So, Socks, what guild are you in? It's a big decision. Your guild says so much about you and what you believe in. What is it? What is it? What wand will you accept, oh great wizard? I only remember a handful of guilds, but she just looks so excited about my answer that I should probably give it my best. Okay, so I rolled a three. I belong in Malifador, 
one day I shall rule the world, ah, ha ha ha, mine is an evil laugh. I shall embrace the dark path of Malifador and lay ruin to this pathetic world. All shall tremble and run before my terrible majesty. Ah, ha 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 ha, evil laugh, ha 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 ha, and so on. Aww. But, but they're the bad guys. We're not evil, we're misunderstood. There's some total hotties in Malifador, don't forget. I shall wear leather pants and torture my enemies while angsting about how nobody really knows the true me. Then, in my third light novel, I'll turn the heroine Miss Stella to my side and we'll fight Mr. Moopy together. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding, right? Yes. Like, was that not too obvious? Oh, okay, good. I was worried for a second. Bad time to forget Grace's trouble understanding sarcasm, I guess. Oh, look, look! With tender care, Grace extracts an adorable, wide-brimmed black hat from the racks and racks of cosplay souvenirs. Wow! Jinx, quick, quick, put this on! Bad idea. Not happening. But you'd look so cute in this Raven Scry Guild hat. Don't do cute. Of course you do cute. I mean, you have a cute cat and you post cute pictures of her to your face wall all the time. Minx is not cute. Minx is a classy lady. And so am I. Classy, you wear sweatpants around the house all the time. Classy sweatpants. They're probably uh, juicy couture. Please. Don't give me the wibbly wobbly eyes. I am immune. Socks, don't you think this hat just screams jinx? Uh, what? Why are you asking me? I swear, whenever these two get together, it's like they're lost in a world all their own. Because I value your opinion. Now, don't you think jinx would look cute? I mean, classy in a raven scry hat? Hmm? Hmm? She raises a good point here. Grace, no hatting without consent. She doesn't want to wear it. Grace, she said no like a half a dozen times. Pretty sure that means she's not going to wear the hat. No cosplay without consent. Thank you, Socks. Glad you can see reason. I wasn't trying to be pushy or anything or cruel. I just, you know, thought it'd look cute. Okay, I think I'm done shopping for goodies now. Thanks for tagging along, you two. My family visited Pengi Paradise once every year or so. Back when I was a kid, feels good to be back here and sharing this wonderful place with you both. Especially you, Socks. I was going to ask you to come with us, but didn't want to bother you. It's never a bother to spend time with you, Grace. Thank you so Aww, much. Aw, thank you. Let's move on. See you around the park later, Socks. Be seeing you. I should probably get out of here before I end up buying that adorable Mr. Moopy plushie that's staring at me from across the magic shop. Where do I want to wander next? Alright, so... We've got Rhapsody and Zapper, Domino and Loxley, and Bunny. And it looks like we are going to go visit Domino and Zap- uh, excuse me, uh, Rhapsody and Zapper. Great. I just realized I was so eager to start the day that I forgot to eat- uh, that I forgot to eat anything resembling breakfast. And now my stomach is being very vocal about it. Wasn't Zapper saying something about stuffing her face with food till she hurls? I should find her. Zapper could be the key to unlocking my hunger. Luckily, she hasn't strayed very far and is very easy to spot. A head of red hair is bouncing around in front of a Bavarian-themed food cart. Rhapsody's also joined in the food hunt, but it looks like they're still concerned with about Zapper's overstuffing her gastrointestinal tract. I wander my way over to them, excited about the chance to eat. Hey there! Although my stomach growling announces me louder than my own voice ever could. Oh wow, somebody's hangry as today, huh? And here I thought I was the designated foodie for this run. You want me to bail you out and order something? I wouldn't say no to chowing down, no. What's on offer? Aw, uh, yeah. Penguin-shaped pretzels. Don't ask me how they make them that way, though. Fair. If Zap's buying, I'll take one too. They do look quite tasty and penguiny. I've never eaten anything in the shape of a penguin, and I'm always wanting to elevate my palate. We step up to the cart. It's classically decorated with all things Bavarian, blue and white checkered diamond print, Oktoberfest fonts, complete with a picture of Pengi wearing later hosen. While the style is a little on the nose, the smells of fresh baked salty pretzel engulf us. My mouth waters as I lick my lips hungrily. It doesn't take long for us to purchase our food and find a place to snack down. So this is supposed to be a penguin? I look down at my pretzel, but I can't just see any semblance to semi-aquatic birds in that mass of twisted dough and salt. Me too. Me too. Perfect. Can't you see its little beak and its rotund penguin body? It's so cute, I could just gobble it up. Can you hear me? Oh, 
Uh, my uh, closed captioning is being laggy. Which is exactly what Zephyr proceeds to do. No thanks. I mean, I get it that we're here at Pangui Paradise, but it just means because it's on brand doesn't actually make it taste better. Does every treat they make have to be penguin shaped? That's the name of the game, Rap. It's called Pinky's Paradise Potluck Procurements for a reason. The what to the what now? It's a basic stamp card and prize system. By spending a ridiculous amount at the park, you are rewarded with a cheat prize that doesn't amount to the actual amount that you spent collecting those stamps. Ugh. Way to overthink it, Rap. Sounds like you've been li listening that. Way to overthink it, Rap. Sounds like you've been spending too much time listening to Loxley's soapbox rants. This isn't about value. It's about stuffing your face full of yummy treats and getting a sweet <laughs> collectible. Okay, so what do you get and how do you get it? Simple enough, travel around the park and order all the special piggy food. Get a food, get a stamp, get another food, get another stamp, get all the stamps, and you get a rare piggy lunchbox. And it's a true collector's item. You can only get that lunchbox here at the park. <laughs> well, okay, I guess you could buy it online for several hundred bucks instead cheaters. I'm gonna earn that damn lunchbox. Not that many people actually legit complete the whole challenge, but I'm not backing down. It will be mine. That's not what you'll be saying when you're hunkered down over a toilet later. Ha! <laughs> At least my food quest has a reward. Eating delicious food is its own reward, my friend. Oh, Rhapsody, I didn't realize you're into the food too. I thought you were babysitting Zap? Nah, I'm here for something truly rare. Penguin eggs. Like for raising your own penguin brood or for eating? Is that legal? I have questions. For eating, of course, but they're not real penguin eggs. Penguin Park just has to keep the penguin gimmick and all their food around the park. They actually use turkey and goose eggs, which are richer and creamier in flavor, so still a treat for me. Real, fake, whatever, as long as it's tasty and enticing. Speaking of socks, what makes you hungry? What do you want to do while you're with us? Let me think. Okay, so, let's see, we've got option one, option two, option three. So it looks like he's going to try the penguin eggs, or they're gonna try the penguin eggs. Pass on the challenge, but as for the eggs, if it's edible, I'll eat it. I'm all about trying adventurous foods we can't get out elsewhere. Think of this one-time experience that we can have. We only get this one life, so might as well try new things, experiment. We can find the eggs at the Pengi Creperie stall. They make a crepe with it. And it's also where Zap can get her next stamp for the potluck procurement. And it's right down the road. Then what are we still doing here? We've got crepes to eat. We hardly finish up our misshapen penguin pretzels and traverse across the park to the pink creperie. The place really stands out. It's a bigger food stall than the rest with a much longer line. You can easily tell it's a park favorite. Like all the other carts though, it's heavily decorated in the food's place of origin, France. This whole park's an international gathering of foodstuffs. Zapper rolls up to the menu with pictures and begins going down the options. All of them have cute little designs on them with adorably matching names. So I'm getting a Cryptopengi. I'm assuming, Rap, you're getting the King Penguin Egg? You got that right. What about you, Socks? Which one are you getting? Both look delicious, honestly, but in the end, I choose... Okay, we rolled a four, the Special Savory Penguin Egg Crepe. Looking at its picture makes my mouth start to water. The only open-faced one upon the crepe itself is a bed of greens, a layer of smoked salmon, creamy cheese, and a fried penguin egg on top, delicately topped with fresh herbs de Provence. Oh my gosh, that sounds really good. Holy crap, that looks good. I'll take the egg crepe, absolutely. It's time to eat a penguin. I can't wait to taste this. We get our food and enjoy it mostly in silence, just experiencing the combination of flavors in our mouths. I vibe with it. It's good to see a celebration of the different types of food from all over the world. Food brings everyone together. No matter where you're from, everybody eats, right? In the words of Yui Nagomi, food brings smiles. Delicious smile. Less talky, more eaty. We all share a friendly laugh and relish in our treats. With this stop on Zapper's challenge tour complete, we follow her for a few more stops. No way in heck I can keep up with Zapper's bottomless stomach. Not trying to match her on this challenge road while this was the right move. But I'm happy to hang around while she blitzes her way through all the food stalls, all the same. With the last stop complete, Zapper holds up her fully stamped card with a burst of pride. Aw, yeah! 
Aw oh, yeah, last stamp and no indigestion yet. Challenge complete. Zapper runs back to the stall and shows off her finished card. In return, the food cart worker hands over a cute little retro-looking Pangy lunchbox complete with thermos. That's really sweet. Nice work, Zap. I can't believe you're able to eat all those foods in one run. I'm impressed. I never say no to a challenge. But now that I actually have it, Zapper hands over the lunchbox to me. Here, all your socks. Me? But you earned this yourself. Nah, nah. I don't really need a lunchbox. It's not the trophy, it's the title. Being one of the few who legit completed the challenge. That's my reward. All right, um, have a good night, MJD82. I will see you later. I'm at a loss for words. Sounds good to me. You should keep it, Socks. We can put it up in the apartment when we get home. It'll be a nice keepsake after we play tomorrow. Oh well, crap, you're right. We've only got one full day in the park. <coughs> I still have so many rides to hit. Socks, Rhapsody, I'll see you both later. It's time to put my stomach to the real test. Look out, world! Here comes Zapper. Zapper bows to us and storms off. Maybe I should go make sure Zap doesn't eat anymore, for her own safety. I nod in agreement and Rhapsody chases after Zapper, leaving me alone. With my tummy full and a brand new old-looking lunchbox nestled in my arms, I should see what everyone else is getting up to. There's so much to do. Okay, and there's Loxley and Domino or Bunny. And let's see, we rolled a five, so we're going to go see if we can find Bunny. Hmm, I can't help but wonder if Team P2W is spending the day before the match here. Are they riding the rides, eating the iconic amusement park food, and buying all the penguin swag too? I can't imagine La Valkyrie letting P2W have any time off, but maybe I'm wrong? Only one way to check. I pull back out my phone and summon my digital assistant. Pirates online. What's up, Socks? How can I make your mini holiday the best one yet? Can you see if Team P2W is here, like, in the park with us? Of course I can, but what for? <laughs> Are you going to sabotage the ride so they can't participate in tomorrow's match? Uh, what? No, I wouldn't do that. Oh, okay, never mind. Why do you want to find them then? I... actually, I'm looking for... It's hard to find the words without giving my intentions away. All these complex feelings I have for Bunny. My heart yearns to be close to them. Bunny. Is Bunny here? If they... <laughs> if they are here, I'd really like to check in on them, especially after our last encounter. I haven't talked to them at all since Max. Hold, please. Iris takes a minute to use her echolocation across the park. Bunny and the rest of the P2W are hanging out at the Pinky Pallor Dice Arcade. Okay, thanks, Iris. No problem. Go have fun with Bunny. Luckily, the arcade isn't too far off from where I am, and I easily make my way there. I pause outside, taking in the lay of the arcade lands. I see Bunny playing on the FOD2 machine. Typical. At least they're predictable. But Divine and Blitz are also looming nearby, and arms reach from Bunny. Ugh, must I answer the Sphinx's riddle to get to Thebes? There's no way around it. If I want to get to Bunny, I must go through the other two. Rolling my eyes, I prepare for the worst as I step inside the arcade. Oh ho ho ho! Look what the cat dragged in! It's the pathetic leader of Future Forward. Bunny's attention moves from the game to me and either shocked to see me. This is quite the surprise, Socks. I would have thought you'd be much too busy with Future Forward to visit your dearest friend. Bunny, you know we aren't supposed to fraternize with the enemy. Don't make me tell Valkyrie you are disobeying her orders. Yeah, we only associate with winners, not <coughs> lots. Relax, Divine, there's no need for that. Socks is just an unfortunate step on our path to victory. But tread lightly on that step. They and the rest of Future Forward are fragile glass babies. Don't want to break them before the big match, am I right? And Divine and Blitz's boisterous laughter roar through the outcade. Excuse me? What's this about? Why would Bunny even say that? I thought we had an understanding, a playful rivalry. One where we cheer each other on, not one of contempt. Is being with P2W getting into their head? Did you come all the way just to scope out where we're going to ultimately be beat you? You must be really a glutton for punishment. Ugh, I don't have the stomach to stay around this loser for much longer. Right? I don't want future forward germs tainting up my re reputation. Ew. Bunny, Blitz, let's go. I'll catch up with you both later, but first I have to teach Socks a lesson for coming into our turf without an invitation. If you're still walking after Bunny decimates you, I'll see your on the battlefield tomorrow. Whatever. Bye. 
Hey, Divine, let's just go think up more insults we can throw at Coda on face wall today. As if I were a ghost, they walk right through me. Leaving me and Bunny alone. As soon as the others are out of sight, Bunny exhales fully. Sorry about that, Socks. Have to keep up appearances, so to speak, with them. You wouldn't believe the other stuff I have to say around those two. And they stretch the kinks out of their neck as if letting that whole episode shed away from them like a snake does its skin. What? You can't just talk like that and then go back to our normal friendly candor when your lackeys leave? One, that's rude. Two, you stick up for your friends. Three, rude! Getting all of that off my chest helps me calm down a bit. I don't like that you're playing along with your crappy behavior. I don't particularly like it either, and you're right, of course. Forgive me? I sigh and nod my approval. I had wanted to come to the arcade and prep for tomorrow, of course, and I wanted to go by myself. But Divine and Blitz insisted on coming, even when I insisted they didn't. I just wanted to get away from them for even a little bit. You have no idea what it's like living with them, Socks. It's awful and they're literally everywhere. I can't escape. So any chance I can get to slip away from them, I take it. Do you want me to leave as well? I don't want to ruin your sacred alone time. No, no, no. I didn't mean it like that. You know I'd love nothing more than if you stayed with me. Plus, I prefer to spend all my alone time with you. Just the two of us. Bunny's lips curl into a teasing smile as they intently watch their every word causing to me to turn another shade of red. <laughs> I can't resist their siren call. Yep, you got it. I quickly composed myself, pretending my heart didn't just almost explode. So, what's up? What do you want to talk about? Honestly, what are your thoughts on the match tomorrow? Well... Alright, we rolled a five, so we're ready. I've done all I can do to prepare for the match tomorrow. No point in stressing about it. That's easy for you to say. Everything's so stressful. I know it's not going to be an easy match tomorrow, but that's why we're spending today having fun. I thought you might say that, Socks. As much as Bunny thinks they're being elusive about their feelings, I can read them like an open book. They're just baiting me, so I ask them the same thing. So, I will return the query. What about you? What are your feelings on the match tomorrow? I don't like it, not one bit. The whole idea of this charity match rubs me the wrong way. But we're raising money for charity. Money! For people in need. What could be wrong with that? Raising money for a cause isn't what I'm having trouble with. That's all good and fine. It's having a meaningless match that doesn't sit well with me. I can't see myself playing seriously at a consequence-free charity match. The results don't even matter. The match still matters to the Pro Tour organizers. Just because you don't think it matters doesn't mean others agree. Many important eyes will be watching this match. This could open up a lot of opportunities with the Pro Tour organizers. Future teammates, coaches, even sponsors could be watching. There's going to be a lot of attention and influence on this match. When you say it, I get it. Like, I understand all those things, but deep in my heart, it still doesn't feel the same. There's no internal pressure to succeed. Overall, my mind just passes it off as just for fun. You need to change your thinking, Bunny. Do it for the kids. All the money we're raising is going to help kids who really need it. Think of the children. Uh, socks? I'm not really a fan of kids in general, so thinking of them definitely won't help. Okay, okay. I'm learning a lot about you today. Why? It's too hard to explain. Bunny pauses, bringing their hand up to their face to chew nervously on their fingernails, debating whether to continue or leave it there. Try me. And what you say here is in complete confidence, I promise. Bunny sighs in reluctance. You'll probably hate me for saying this, but it's hard for me to care about helping kids in need when no one helped me. As a kid, every day I wished for someone to come help me, to save me. And no one did. This went on for years. Even when I pleaded, no one saved me from my father's anger. No one saved me from my mother's emotional abuse. I had to save myself because I had no other choice. If I didn't, I... Children are strong, Socks. They survive. And seeing them, I'm just reminded of all the pain I endured as one. I sigh from the sheer weight of that recounting. Clearly, youth was hard on them in ways I didn't know. You don't have to say anything, and I know you don't need my condolences, but I'm sorry you had to deal with that. But you didn't have to tell me any of that, and yet you did. Why? 
Bunny glances around, ensuring we're alone. Well, they close the distance between us. Putting a hand delicately on my shoulder, they lean in and I feel their breath tickle my ear. We share the same passion, the same love of FOD2. You and I are equals on the battlefield, and that brings me comfort. It helps me forget all about my past and focus on our future. Bunny pulls back enough to gaze into my eyes. They move their hand from my shoulder, caressing my cheek before finally resting it on my chin. There's something I need to tell you. I... I... We both hear the sound of the arcade doors open behind us, and Bunny immediately steps back. They turn around to check who it is. But it's just so ram some rando. I said too much. Blitz and Divine are probably looking for me. I need to go find them before they get suspicious. Bunny turns abruptly and leaves me in their wake. I take a mere moment to compose myself, looking around to see if anyone saw what just transpired. No one was paying attention, each too involved in their own games. I sigh, not knowing what else to do. What was Bunny talking about? There's nothing left for me in this arcade until tomorrow, so I simply leave. Actually, you know what? Rather than running around after my friends, I think it's time to take a quick moment for myself. It's pretty warm here, despite being an ice-themed wonderland of fun. I could go for something cool and refreshing. This being Pengi Paradise, there's always refreshments within eyesight. So I make my way over to a lemonade stand. They're charging an arm and a leg and a kidney and a lung for this stuff, but what am I gonna do, leave the park just to get a drink? Fishing enough money to buy an afternoon of FOD2 play out of my pocket, I step up to make my order. Hi, I'd like to get a... Alright, so one and two is lemonade, three and four is soda, five and six is diet soda, seven and eight is slushy, and nine and ten is water. I rolled a three, so I'm getting a soda. Large soda, please. Make that three, please. I'm paying. Thank you. With a shrug, the employee behind the refreshment stand slides over three of my selected beverage. Valkyrie accepts two of them with a wave of her phone and a nod of thanks in his general direction. Three drinks paid for. Thank you for using Iris Pay, human. She sets her extra drink aside for now, then takes a long, long sip of her own soda before speaking. It's for my niece. She's riding the madly rotating buccaneer over there. See? Pink hat. Sure enough, an adorable youngster with a bright pink hat waves to us while her motorized pirate ship twirls and twirls. Looking forward to facing us at the charity show match tomorrow? I am not real sure how to make small talk in this situation. This is the woman who stole our sponsor, told me off for being an esports newbie, and has done all she can to stand in our way, all while saying it's for our own good. But I can't just stand here in a daze, so... Alright, we rolled a four. Can we instead talk about literally anything else? I can't believe she wants to exchange pleasantries with me. Oh yes! Tomorrow is going to be splendid. It'll be a gay old time. And while we're at it, the weather's nice, local sports ball team is winning, my 2.5 kids and a dog are doing well, and so on and so forth. So, we done there? Have I made enough small talk to qualify for social acceptance? You want to be that way, be my guest. I figured I'd extend a courtesy, but if you don't want to accept it at face value, that's not my problem. And while I'm extending you courtesies, regardless of whether you appreciate them or not, Valkyrie pauses as she considers whether or not she should speak up about something or leave it unsaid. In the end, she shrugs and pushes ahead. Let me offer you some free advice. I know it's too late to back your team out of the show match tomorrow, but you may want to consider distancing yourself from it. Let's be perfectly honest. P2W is going to destroy you in front of a very large audience. It's going to be painful. We beat you before in an impromptu match against an unknown opponent. This time, we're prepared. That means the beating will be twice as severe. But you don't need to be humiliated. You personally, I mean. Step back from the fight. Let two of your players take on my team while you stay on the sidelines. Don't be a ground zero when it happens. Everybody will have a good time, will raise money for charity, and your own reputation will stay intact. You're the only serious player on that team, after all. Oh boy. I'm trying to help you, whether you believe that or not. I've been trying to help all this time. Your team won't last after their media spotlight fades. 
but you could endure. You could reach your dreams without them. One day, you might even join the best of the best. You could be in team play to win, right alongside your rival. But that future only happens if you keep your cool and don't make this personal. Don't step up to the plate tomorrow. Don't let their impending failure stain your career. Sound good? More sage wisdom, supposedly. Yet, Punchy78 warned me that her kindness smacks her spite. I could call her out on that, but what's the point? She'd just deny it again. She has a point. We haven't decided which two members of Future Forward will face off against two members of Team P2W. I could step back, not to hide in shame, but to let my friends take the spotlight. I was there when we lost against Team P2W at the start of this. Maybe it's me? Am I the one holding them back? Or am I due a win over them? Maybe I shouldn't step back. What's the best play here? So, we've got to make a decision. One to three is letting your friends do the fighting, and four to six is letting the fight yourself. And we are refusing. We are leading the fight ourselves. I decide to stand my ground and stand firm and give her my own two cents on the matter. And thanks, but no thanks. See you at the match. Thanks, but no thanks. See you at the match. I remain stoic, not giving her an inch, not showing any fear or anger or arrogance, just absolute determination. Guess it was too much to hope you'd listen to reason, wasn't it? But hope springs eternal, and you can't say I didn't try. Let me be perfectly clear. You're no threat to me. You never have been. You never will be. I don't care what that pathetic clickbait reporter says. This is not personal. This is not getting under my skin. You're not that important. All you are is an arrogant little flea, one I can flick off at any time. So if you won't listen to reason and insist on acting like a pest, you'll be squashed by the one. As our conversation comes to an abrupt end, the girl in the pink hat runs out the exit from the madly rotating buccaneer swooping in to scoop up her soda. I have more important concerns right now. My family comes first. I'll see you at the match tomorrow, personally. Nope, that is not a happy gamer. No way, no how. With any luck, I've rattled her, giving me the edge in the fight tomorrow. Or made her twice as determined to destroy me, I guess. Time will tell. Afternoons rolling in as Pingy Paradise chills the hell out com a little compared to the morning mayhem. Only a few hours before my pan to seek out love and romance begins. It'll be a big step, but nighttime is the right time, and I'll be ready. Meanwhile, plenty of fun to be had elsewhere in the park. So, where to wander first? Oh, Hamza! Okay, so I rolled a three, so we're going to go say hello to Domino and Rhapsody. The day has already been filled to the brim with excitement, fun, overly cute penguins, and it's only half over. So it's a little bit of a surprise when I see Domino and Rhapsody heading against the massive crowds towards the entrance. It's way too early to leave the park. Maybe they know something I don't know, like a super secret pengi event. At least they've un they're unhurried in their stride, so it's easy for me to catch up with them. Leaving so soon? Had enough silly for one day? Hey. Yes, I am officially overdosed on silly. I seek a mere respite from the silly, but there will be plenty more good times ahead tonight once the park quiets down a bit. Ideally, there's a few things I wanted to check up on before tomorrow's big match with P2W. What if we Looking at player stats and strategies, writing down tips for everyone, that kind of research, and I won't have time for it later. So I'm heading back to the hotel for a midday siesta. Ditto, I could use a retreat myself. It's the busiest time at the park and the crowds are overwhelming. Too many bodies, too many children, too much simulation. I see your point. A nice break to clear your head is the perfect way to recharge those batteries. Socks, would you like to join us? As much as a break sounds welcoming, I have a list of things I want to get done and not all of them are checked off yet. How about escorting us to the entrance instead? Now that's something I would love to join you on. There are a couple shops near the entrance I wanted to check out. They pile all the fancy shops near the gates to maximize the amount of money people spend. Please exit through the gift shop, consumer peons. It's the same idea with snacks at the checkout in the grocery store. Impulse buys. We just can't leave without our 700th pengi themed item, can we? Oh, we can. And we will. I shall resist the temptation. 
As we stroll towards their destination, the crowds are getting thicker and coming right at us. I feel like salmon swimming upstream. Without the egg laying and death right after. Like Domino mentioned, there are a lot of restaurants, gift shops, clothing stores, anything and everything you could think of. As our attention is focused on the various boutiques, we hear some ruckus in the distance and our ears suddenly perk up. Wait, are those drums? And trumpets. And the Pengi theme! Everyone knows the Pengi theme. Or if they didn't, they'd know about it spending five minutes here. I can't help but sing along. Pengi, Pengi, he makes me so happy. Pengi, 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 he's so silly. While we look for the oncoming sounds, Rhapsody takes out their phone to check something. It's time for the 3 p.m. Pengi parade through Iceland Street. And it's right on time. Before we can appropriately react, children are shouting and congealing into blobs on the main thoroughfare. We're surrounded on all sides by people singing along, clapping, and taking pictures. Near an escape in sight. Colorful balloons, smiling youths, upbeat family-friendly music. The pain! The pain! We'll never make it to the exit at this rate. We'll be stuck here forever. Once our minds crack, we'll be locked into a mascot costume, brainwashed and forced to dance forever. There's got to be something we can do. Right, we rolled a four, we find an alternative route. We can't go forward, so we go backwards. I'm sure we can find an alternative way around the parade. Sounds good to Great me. thinking, Socks. Maybe we can double back and walk around this section of the park. There has to be more than one way to leave this place, right? That's assuming the mesmerized masses will let us through, and that's looking less and less likely. Domino's right. There are people surrounding us, trapping us in. We can't even take a single step back. <sighs> I make an effort, but I'm just bumped back into place. There's nothing we can do to stop the onslaught of floats, dancing people in loud costumes, marching bands. We just have to sit tight and watch it all go by. Maybe it's a good thing we're trapped here, otherwise we might have gotten trampled by any of the numerous things around us. Oof. What a way to go. Dying in the silliest place on earth, trademark all rights reserve. Did you know there have been over 30 deaths at Pengi Paradise since its opening in 1970X? Of course, all of them were caused by people not following the rules or kids hiding until the park closes and then swimming in the pengi pond knowingly when they can't swim. Huh? Really? really? I can understand if an accident happens for every once in a blue moon, but 30 seems like too many. Yeah, wouldn't we have heard about it? Oh, but Big Penguin doesn't want you to know about it. They've been covering up deaths at this park for years. They pay off the families. Can't have a few bad eggs tarnish the name of the most powerful fowl, otherwise no one would show up. It would be deemed unsafe. How would they make their billions? Are you sure those just aren't urban legends scaring children into behaving? My parents told me stories like that when I was little. No one would really stand up in the middle of the ride and get decapitated, right? Rhapsody's right, I don't think you have to worry about your safety here. I'm willing to bet a lot of those are tall tales. Clearly, they're very safety-minded here. There's no need to be afraid. Exactly. I'm sure half the things you've heard are embellishments of the truth or just made up. Like ghost stories around the campfire. Really? If you're so sure this place isn't a death trap, just ask Iris. I shrug and pull out my phone. Hey, Iris, I need you to research something for me. Iris, online. Of course, Socks. What do you need to know? How many rides can you ride at Pengi Paradise? The best foods to eat in the park? Oh, oh, what about a list, top 10 list of the top 10 things people look up about Pengi Par Tar Paradise? I was wondering how many deaths have happened here. Ooh, spoopy. Nice choice. Searching. My sources say yes. It seems there have been a total of 48 deaths. I had to search through police records, newspapers, and a few blogs to compile the number. Not an easy search, though. This information doesn't really want to be free. See? Can't trust corporations that aim to please people. What's outwardly overly happy and joyous always has a dark history and hides its secrets. Hooray! True! In fact, the most gruesome death was a teenager who got slowly crushed to death on the Happy Penguin Dance Ride. He jumped out of the cart, but his pant leg got stuck between the rail and the car, sucking him under and pulverizing him. Our awkward silence mixes with the quiet of the last float passing us by and the music fades into the distance. Well, uh, thank goodness the parade's over, huh? With the slow-moving street show done, the crowds thin out as everyone returns to their normal actions. We're just left to question our experience. Well, I, for one, am glad we had this conversation. Shall we depart? 
I'm in favor of going and quickly. That parade cut into serious prep time. Let's go. Before we get caught up in anything else, the three of us start for the exit. And in no time, we make it. All right, I'll catch up with both of you later tonight after things chill the heck out a bit. And I have sufficient time to take that horrible little pile of facts and lock it in a small box buried deep down within my psyche forever. Forever and ever. I wave goodbye to Rhapsody and Domino as they pass through the turnstile. Admittedly, I don't feel like perusing the shops much anymore, so I watch until I can no longer see them. Alright, so 1 and 2 is going to be Zapper and Grace, 3 and 4 is going to be Hamza, and 5 and 6 is going to be Jinx and Loxley. So it looks like we're going to say hi to Jinx and Loxley now. Okay, now where's Jinx gotten off to? Wait, there we go. I spot the rented mobility scooter we encouraged her to use today parked outside an arcade. Thankful to be out of the heat, I wander inside to find her. I spot her sitting around a bit bored while Loxley happily raids Pinky's Palace's stock of cream game prizes. Excellent! These prizes are quite a value. I'm so tempted to blow my entire purse on crane pools then flip them in online auctions. Weirdest form of investment banking I've ever heard of. Any port in a store, my friend, in these tough times, one must seek economic advantage wherever one is found. I gotta admit, I bought my iPad from a guy who won it from a crane game at an arcade. Hey, hey, price scouring? He is, I'm not. I'm uh, not really doing much of anything today. Why not? Plenty of rides around here. Yeah, rides I can't go on. Anything that jostles your spine is dangerous as hell for me. There's the edutainment and world showcase stuff, but eh, that's more Grace's thing, not mine. Too dull. So just hanging around the arcade, poking the retro games, wishing the racer cabs had adaptations. Marvelous. And I am keeping our fellow teammate company to raise her spirits. Eh, making a valiant attempt at least. Oh, uh, sorry to hear you can't go on the rides, Jinx. Honestly, not that into rides anyway. Also super boring. Boring? A steel coaster that zips through loops at over 100 miles an hour is boring? It's on a track. There's nothing exciting about that. So what, you want it to have a chance to kill you instead? Eh, bad at explaining things. Okay, let me see if I can put it in relative terms. I'm somewhere between Grace and Zapper. Grace, she likes safe and comfortable experiences, predictable ones. Zapper wants absolute thrill, diving headfirst into the unknown with no hand on the controls. Intense risk is her thing. But me, I want the horizon. I want to see a destination so very clearly, then find a way to get there with optimum speed. My fantasy is one of absolute control and precision. When you master riding the razor's edge by your skill alone, when you're in the zone like that, you feel like you can accomplish anything. A ride isn't like that. A ride has no control to master. A ride is just fake thrills within perfect comfort, so not my thing. I concur, friend. Well said, well said, and an admirable approach to living one's life. Yeah, well, with this. idealism's great until you're stuck in an amusement park full of things you can't do and don't enjoy. Shame the arcade's not accessible like good clean fun. They've got a limited edition of Fast Cars 4 here I'd love to try, but nope, can't do the pedals. But whatever. Don't need to live in perpetual entertainment. Can be bored for a bit and survive just fine. Okay, so... How about you sit on my lap and I work the pedals for you? I wouldn't mind at all. Hey, if you want to take a spin on Fast Cars 4, all you have to do is ask. I can be your substitute gas and brake pedal. It'll be a tight fit, but I get we bet we could stack up and make it happen. Just sit on my lap. Uh, no? Yeah, gonna pass on that one. In fact, let's just pretend you never said that in the first place, because otherwise, this would just be hellaciously awkward. Uh, right, sorry. Was kidding. Leave the jokes to this joker next to me. Indeed, I have years of experience being laughed at. For now, I'll stick with looking longingly at a game I can't play until I get bored and leave. Ugh. Look, can we stop talking accommodations now? Swear to God, there's more to my life than just being the disabled girl. Problem is, whenever we travel, whenever I'm outside my comfy, adapted home, it throws a giant spotlight on these problems. Hate these constant reminders. Jinx, I assure you, none of us see you as a condition rather than a person. We are your friends and allies, and we that understand the struggles you face need not define you. 
Agreed. Let's table this and just focus on having fun together. Sound good? Yeah, definitely. As you like. Very well. Perhaps a reminder of our friendship in dull form is in order. Loxley turns back to the crane game he has been gradually depleting of all value, effortlessly moving the skinny metal hook in place over a penguin dolly. And manages to snag two of them in one grab, the precarious physics of it all resulting in a pair dropping into the prize chute. I did that once. I was playing a crane game in Japan. I was going for a Sally plushie from Nightmare Before Christmas, and I got two at once. It was a Sally and then this weird bean character. It was like a bean with foam on him or something. Here's a plush friend for you, Jinx, and one for Grace. Hmm, that was unusually easy. Good grip strength on this game. Perhaps I could earn Grace a few more of these fine keepsakes to bring home from our trip together. But his musings seem to have triggered an exasperated reaction from Jinx, who groans at the gentlemanly gesture. Come on. Okay, that's it. Just gonna come out and say it. Tired of dancing around the issue. Boxley, what are your intentions towards Grace? Pardon, friend? I was merely aiming to find a gift for a good friend, nothing more. Really, you pull two dolls from that machine, and instead of gifts for Jinx and Socks, no, your instinct is to make them gifts for Jinx and Grace. Grace isn't here right now. Socks is. I, uh, don't really need a doll. Not the point. Boxley, you damn know... Grace is my best friend in the world. I won't let anyone break her heart. Not down for that. So are you or are you not looking to seduce her with your gifts and flattery and constant praise? What? Be real with me. Right here, right now. In front of Socks, our arbiter of team conflict. Oh good. Now I'm being pulled into this. What, at long last, is the freaking deal with you and Grace? I see. He pauses, making sure he's not tossing off some quick, dismissive answer. Put serious thought into it. I offer my sincere apologies. I've no romantic designs on Miss Cooper. I understand completely how my words may be read that way, however. And I apologize for being vague about your friend. No, my feelings are ones of admiration. Grace has a tendency to dismiss or belittle her own accomplishments. She sees them as mere tinkerings or accidents. But she is a genius. Creating iris and apps that's... Very near and dear to me, that was a work of absolute genius. Am I protective of her? Absolutely. Because this world does not deserve someone with such a gentle heart and intricate mind. But romance, no. If I seem to have a knight's affections, they are meant to be ideals of respect. I seek and desire nothing more than that. However, if you're uncomfortable with my support of her, I will give her distance. I don't want to jeopardize our friendship. Would that be acceptable? sensible, but socks want to weigh in here? What do you think? And now it's back to me, the team arbiter. There's genuine strength in his words. I can usually tell when someone's playing me, but he's speaking true. He's not interested in wooing Grace to his side. But what Jinx doesn't know is that Loxley is working from some mysterious group to secure a murderous arcade game called Polybius. An iris created by Grace is built on the back of Polybius code. I don't have all the facts, but I feel like this is all connected. Is there more going on here than Loxley's let on, even to me? If I call Loxley to the carpet on his side hustle, right when Jinx is suspecting him, it's going to rattle the team just before a major event. And even aside from that, I can tell he's being real when he's not saying he's not romantically interested in Grace. He's not lying. Do I want to quietly encourage Jinx's suspicion or back Loxley up on this? Okay, we rolled a six. Loxley's been pulling for the team since day one. I don't doubt his commitment. Whatever else Loxley's got going on in his life, he's been pulling for future forward from the very beginning. He's given us no reason to mistrust him so far. So when he says he's not romantically interested in Grace, I'm willing to believe it. Thank you, my friend. Your faith is appreciated. Call it more a matter of observation than faith. You've done no wrong to us so far. And it's my intent to carry on that fine tradition of allowing no harm to come to future forward. Hmm, okay. He owned up acting skeevy and apologized. That goes a long way in my book. Didn't gaslight me, claiming I was imagining it all. So, we're good? Good. We're good. Good. Also, this arcade sucks and I'm bored. Let's go. You can prove your devotion by getting me a hot dog. As you like, Lady Jinx, coming along, socks. I've got more on my plate right now. Dinner can wait. Have fun. Even if Loxley's not making the moves on Grace, he's making some kind of moves in the dark. 
Loxley's let me in on most of his secrets, but I think he's still holding something back. He wants to protect me, protect all of Future Forward. And I'd hazard, very specifically, wants to protect Grace from this polybius nonsense. But I'm still having those nightmares of that digital smile every single night. Ugh, push this down, deal with it another time, Pangy Paradise awaits. Alright, so we got one more. It's either going to be Zapper and Grace or Hamza. And we're going to say hello to Zapper and Grace. Actually, you know what? Let's say hi to Hamza. Hang on. I s could swear I saw a swish of a brown cloak just now. Drawn by curiosity, I crisscrossed my way through Pangy Paradise over to the edutainment pavilion, only to find... Aha! A glorious find. Glorious indeed. Truly, Hamza's collection is growing by leaps and bounds. Yep, it's Hamza, the arcade auction master and tournament host in all his finery, and as usual playing up his self-chosen role as an eccentric rich dude. Looking wildly out of place amidst all the jorts and fanny packs and kids wearing penguin hats, he's overseeing a small work crew moving wooden crates around. Okay, I gotta know what's going on here. Uh, Hamza, right? Ah, greetings. Excellent, excellent. Hamza's day is vastly improved by your spontaneous appearance. If you came to enjoy the robots of the future year 1999 exhibit, I'm afraid you're one day too late. Hamza has purchased the entire lot for his personal archives. I, uh, no, I came over here because I was kind of surprised to see you here. Ah, even better. Hamza appreciates being appreciated. What's this about robots exactly? Yes, one of the many corporate sponsored science themed attractions of Pengi Paradox. Sadly, most are outstandingly outdated by this point. The corporate masters of this attraction were going to simply throw away all these delightful plastic robots of yesteryear. Such an incredible waste. No, Hamza will not allow it. Technology of the past must be preserved for future generations to understand and appreciate. So basically, Hamza's like the savior of the Enchanted Village for those of us who grew up in the Boston area. As an arcade aficionado, surely you agree, yes? I'm really more of a PC history nerd than an arcade history nerd, but I get the idea. Obsolete doesn't automatically mean something's garbage. Since my family wasn't particularly rich, most of my games growing up were outdated MS-DOS jank like old shareware compilations and stuff, but I loved it all the same. Excellent! Truly, you have taste and class. So what sort of robots were on display at a kitty amusement park? I'm guessing they're like those creepy musical animal robots back at your arcade warehouse? Far from it. These are helpful automata, designed to interact with and amuse the masses. In fact... Clapping twice for attention, he waves over one of the workers, boxing up all these old beige and brown plastic robots. Bring forth the robo! And the workers wheel over a particularly clunky, chunky-looking robot that looks like it accidentally wandered off the set of a low-budget 1970X sci-fi movie. In a voice like a sliced and diced audio tape, it greets me. Hello, human friend. I am Robert, your robotic operational body of robotics. From the year. Error. Get out of range. Hi, Trogdor. I am a product of Cooper Technologies. Striving every day to make your life fitter, happier, more productive. Would you like to know more? What? Glorious, is he not? A perfect snapshot in time of what people thought the future would become. Okay, we rolled a one. Obsolete, but definitely still adorable. Aw, it's so cute! I love seeing cool old robots. Someone poured a lot of heart into this silly design. Part of me really wishes we had the future I saw in cartoons, robot friends, flying cars, the works. A robot in every household. Indeed, a virtual paradise. Sadly, we exist in the distant future year 20XTX, a corporate dystopia with no non-flying cars. But I feel these optimistic visions of the future can yet inform where we may go as a people. We can have those chrome dreams if we seek them further. You might be right about that. But those thoughts are interrupted by a buzzing sound from my pocket. Curious to see if someone's calling me, I pull out my phone. Oh, Iris, what's up? You need something? If you don't mind... 
Can I see Robor for myself? I can barely hear what's going on from deep in your pocket. With a shrug, I tilt my camera so Iris can get a better view. In the distant future, robots will be your friends. We will learn from you. You will learn from us. One day, Robor hopes to learn how to feel. Error. Emotional status data table not loaded. Please check your OX and on that. I see. And the tiny image of Iris glowing on my phone screen looks... sad. On seeing this awkward and broken relic of yesteryear. This... This is how humans see us, isn't it? Just as... junk... things... objects. I'm made by Cooper Technologies, too. I'm generations beyond Roblox. But... we were both made to be helpful. And once we aren't helpful anymore... We get thrown out, just like paint. Aww. Oh, oh, jeez. I'm, I'm sorry, Iris. It's okay. I understand. I mean, I was never very good at my job. I was programmed to obsessively push pizza bagels. I couldn't operate at full power unless someone paid hundreds of dollars. No wonder Cooper Technologies decided to take me off the market. Humans didn't want me. I failed them. I wasn't good enough, and I'm just an app, aren't I? They can shut off my service and delete me any time they want. But I'm not alive, so that's okay, I guess. Ah, oh, we rolled a four. Hey, cheer up. At least your brain isn't made of magnetic tape like Robors. Iris, Robor here has brains made out of magnetic tape and little plastic gears. You've evolved way beyond that. I mean, I don't go down to the zoo and think, we keep the monkeys in cages, I guess I'm just an animal too. Nah, dog. We've evolved and so have you. So don't let something like this get you down. Just keep doing your own thing, okay? Okay, I guess that makes some sense. And, and I am doing my own thing. I'm helping people. I'm doing my best to help everyone. I may have been programmed with a drive to help people with their problems, but it's a drive I've chosen to embrace. I want to be helpful. And, and maybe if I'm very helpful, if I prove I'm useful and safe and nothing at all to be scared of, humans will eventually accept me. Yes, we'll help everyone, and when everyone is happy, we'll be embraced by humanity, right? Alright, we rolled a four. Yeah, honestly, humanity's pretty much complete pants at treating each other like humans. I think an outside party could help out there. If you can keep us from obliterating each other or destroying the world, I think I could welcome our adorable robot overlords. Uh, that's not quite how I'd put it, but... Thank you for the vote of confidence all the same. We'll do our best to help you all. And that's when we both look up and realize we just had that entire extremely dangerous conversation right in front of Hamza! Crap baskets! Um, Socks. Rest assured, Hamza has no wish to report you for software piracy. Your discussion shall be kept in confidence. Iris is a being of burning passion, a fierce and true spirit of life. Hamza recognizes this and would never inhibit that rise to glory. Oh good, thank you. Much appreciated. But if Hamza can offer your friend a bit of inside information, shall we say? To ease her worries? In complete confidence, of course. Iris, you believe Cooper Technologies saw you as flawed and inadequate, and that is why they discarded you. Yes? Yes. I mean, they tried to kill me. If not for our mother, um, Grace Cooper, leaking our code to an anonymous group that set up new servers, we'd be gone. Obviously, they did it because my product line wasn't worth continuing. Right? On the contrary, the Iris software was quite profitable. Know that I cannot speak as to why I know this fact. But an outside party forced Cooper Technologies to drop our support for Iris. I have a feeling it's those same um, MIBs that are after Polybius. The issue is not one of usefulness. The issue is the core technology Iris is built upon. Hmm. Perhaps it's best I keep things vague. Hamza has learned many a dark secret. 
while exploring the depths of arcade history. Unless you already know of the strange technology I refer to? If so, I have no doubt you can piece together the rest yourself. Wait, do you mean... Polybius. Grace told me that Cooper Technologies built Iris on the back of Sinus Lotions Tech, the company that made Polybius. She had no idea Iris's personality systems have that weird and extremely dangerous arcade software baked right in. And as for who shut down the project, that could only be the one who was hunting down Polybius, the one I ran into back at Max when she tried to tack into my Iris. Oh, crap baskets. Crap baskets, indeed. <laughs> It was her? She tried to have my sisters killed? Hamza suggests we speak no further. This is a public locale, and while the anonymity of the crowd grants us some leeway, it is not a total mask for such subterfuge. The information was merely offered to bolster the spirit of Iris, so that she may know she was not discarded like Robo. Indeed, Quite the opposite. She was too successful. Now, Hamza must depart. The collection of robotic technologies is complete, and he has shipping manifests to fill out. Luck to you in your efforts against Team P2W, my friends. May you bathe in the blood of your enemies. Wow. Pretty direct. Goodbye, big sister. Oh boy, this is a lot to think about. I think we'd better be better off focusing on fun at Pengi Paradise today. Deal with any fallout from this later. Seconded. I didn't ask to get wrapped up in some giant techno conspiracy. I just wanted to play video games. But I may need to tell Loxley about this. He's looking for Polybius tech, so he should be told about this development. Assuming he didn't already know and was keeping it from me for my own good as usual. Well, um, technically she's, like, more advanced than Robor, so in that case it would be Big Sister. Right. Back to Pengi Paradise, silliest place on Earth, trademark, all rights reserved. Back to my life, already in progress. Nighttime in Pengi Paradise. By this point, the rowdy kids and large families have retired to various hotels in the area. The park's much quieter now. The rides are still running, of course, but that's no longer the focus. Now, gaggles of college kids roam, as well as couples walking arm in arm. Pengi Paradise is for lovers, or so the slogan goes. They tried to trademark that one, too, but the state of Virginia sued them. If I had any sense, I'd be headed back to my own hotel for a good night's sleep. The big exhibition match against our arch rivals is going down tomorrow morning. But this is no time for sleep. I've got plans. This is the night. The night. The night where I realized my romantic ambitions. Besides, my phone's busy beeping away in my pocket rather insistently, like a wake-up alarm for the soul. Beep, beep. Beep, beep, socks. It is now 7 p.m. You know what that means. Way ahead of you. I'm ready to go ask Grace out on a date. I'm so glad to hear it. It's fun to work with a user that already knows what they need from life. Less calculation for me to do. Still, I should enact my relationship safeguard routines and offer you my final report, even if it's just to reaffirm what you already know, okay? Nothing wrong with a little reaffirmation, hit me. Okay. Okay, so I have adjusted my internal metrics based on how well your personality meshes with everyone on the team. Let's see. Here are your current standings with everyone in Future Forward. Hooray for high scores, I guess. Love isn't a game, socks. Even if I have to interpret it through floating point mathematics. Remember, the reason my numbers exist is because of human decisions. You choose who you wanted to spend time with, and they chose how to react to you. This isn't about having a high score, it's about your free will and your heart, right? Right, right. So, here's how things have shifted based on what sort of a person you've become. When it comes to bold risk-taking, you and Zapper share the same approach to life. You are both gutsy. It takes a steady hand to be a game developer and a tactical expert, so you mesh well with Grace. You'd think being both gutsy and steady would be a contradiction, but you and Jinx prove that wrong. She appreciates your intensity and your thoughtfulness. You analyze the world around being before making decisions and Rhapsody thinks exactly the same way. You're both very steady. 
Loxley's approach to life can be very gutsy, making bold and dramatic moves. You're both quite good at that. Thank you. And that's thank everyone you. who matches your personality. Thank you, thank you. you didn't mention Domino. Oh, Domino is sort of your psychological opposite. But that doesn't mean you don't get along, right? Right, just no bonus points. And so, after all those calculations, I can definitively say you're a fine match for Rhapsody, Grace, and Loxley. You have a 99.97% chance of romantic success with all three of them. And what do you know, there's Grace, exactly as I planned. Mwahahaha, and so on. Clearly, you two have a bright future together, if you want to go ahead with that plan, of course. No pressure. Okay, with all that taken care of, it's time for romance. Right, I'm ready to decide. Great, and before you take this big step, do you want me to back up your save data? Nah, I'm good. Here we go. Of all those close to you, whom do you want to share your heart with? It's Grace. It has to be Grace. She's just... She's the kindest, most sincere person I know. A warm heart. And I want to share my heart with her. Aw, that's so sweet. Mom needs someone like you in her life. Right, because she's your, uh, mom. Your programmer. I'll stay quiet so you two can enjoy the evening. Bye! I pocket my digital genie and approach her creator, who is leaning against the fencing around the lake, smiling wistfully across the artificial waters. Isn't it just lovely? Pangi Paradise really is one of my favorite places in the world. The beautiful architecture, the colorful lighting, the peaceful lake at the heart of it all. It's truly a penguin-themed paradise, yeah. So, uh, grapes. Listen, I was wondering something. Oh, what's up, Socks? This place and time, it's the perfect moment to ask you out on a date. I think the moment is right. The place is right. It's now or never, so... Grace, would you like to go out on a date with me? Hmm? Oh, a date? The moment of shock passes quickly, though. Almost as if she was expecting this on some level. And sure enough, she's smiling my way soon after. Yes. 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 A hundred times yes. I'd simply love to go out on a date with you. Pardon my reaction. I guess my mind was just wandering a little. And, and that kind of took me by surprise. It's okay. I'm just happy we both feel the same way. Absolutely. You mean so much to me. I've... I wasn't sure if you'd be interested, since you're usually so focused on the pro tour, but, but yes, I'd love to go out with you. Stifles a little giggle, feeling dizzy with excitement. You've really changed my life, you know? Both my life and the lives of all the friends I hold so dear. Before you came along, giving us a rallying point, well, we weren't nearly as close as we are now. And I'm thankful to know you. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'll date you just out of gratitude alone, or even out of admiration. It's genuinely because you're a wonderful person, and, uh... Ace, it's okay, it's okay. I understand. She returns a shy little smile my way, nodding in appreciation. I know what brought this on. It's Pinky Paradise, right? This place is just so romantic. The lovely music, the beautiful lighting, everything. I'll admit, in the past, I've been envious. Watching couples walking and laughing and talking. Watching them enjoy their lives. But now I don't have to be envious. Right? Because you're here with me. This time is different. Hang on, how many times have you come here exactly? Oh, I don't know, maybe 10 times? Mostly with my family. We'd sometimes take the private jet down here for a weekend outing. Private jet? Um, yeah. I mean, you know my family owns Cooper Technologies. We're kinda rich. Really rich. It can be very distorting. It distorts my worldview. I mean, I grew up in protective isolation without much understanding of the real world outside our walls. It's thanks to friends like Jinx and you and everyone else, of course, that I'm learning how society actually works for the other 99%. That's Even if the reality of reality can be a little disheartening. Honestly, I want to be something other than my inheritance. I want to be my own person. And I want to see the world with clear eyes. You understand, right?
I understand completely. I'm just me as well. Nothing more or less. I get it. Believe me. I mean, I like people to see me as socks. Not just where I came from or the life I was leading before now. It wasn't really much of a life, to be honest. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. I... No, no, it's okay. My point is that we are Socks and Grace. No more, no less. And that's all we need to be. Right, right. That's all we need to be. Thank you for understanding. And with a smile, Grace comes to a decision. I know exactly where I want to go with you tonight. I want to share something very special to me, something I love with all my heart. Oh, what do you have in mind? We are going to It's a Chilly World. What? You know, the boat ride with the mechanical penguins coming together in a harmony from all nationalities to sing a song of peace. I am familiar with it, mostly. Is that a kiddie ride for kiddies? Is it even operating this late at night? Definitely, it's popular with couples too. And I definitely want to take you to Chili World. I love the story of how Chili World came to be. Do you know it? Not as such. A grade school art teacher designed the entire ride. She won a contest and got to direct the project for the Matsushita Collective, owners of the Pengi IP. They didn't really interfere very much. It's a stateside park and they're more focused on Japanese efforts, so it's a pure vision despite its corporate origins. Making art under capitalism can be different, I know. Well, I say I know, but I'm really just starting to understand since leaving home. No, no, I'm getting off track. The point is the vision. She wanted Chili World to be a vision of what the world could be. A world we share together where there's no war, no suffering, only joy. And penguins. Joy and penguins, yes. You know I value creative vision. I'm trying to express my own creative vision with my indie game, The Wander Lost Trail. And I love experiencing the vision of other creators. So, what do you think? Wanna go to see if it's a chilly world after all? If this is what you want to do for our date, okay. If this is what you want, okay. I'm good with anything you'd find enjoyable. I guess you're not as into the idea as I am, but well, maybe I can turn that around. You'll see, this'll be a night you won't forget. I offer my arm to her, which Grace accepts gracefully, as it were. And together, arm in arm, we stroll along the paths of Pengi Paradise, much like the other couples in the park, heading towards our destiny together. The ride is practically abandoned when we arrive. From the outside, I wasn't even sure if it was an operation. Other couples were headed to the park's restaurants and clubs. But on poking our heads through the doors, sure enough, a few bored-looking cast members were on hand to wave us through the non-existent line. After basic safety instructions, don't stand up, don't get out. <gasps> excuse me, don't stand up, don't get out of the boat, enjoy the ride, have a chilly day, we settled into the plastic vessel seats and embarked. A quick primer on the creative vision of It's a Chilly World. It's a very slow-moving boat ride past robotic penguins, each one clicking and clacking its way through a song and dance routine. The song is a minute and a half long and repeats, and repeats, and repeats, and this experience continues for over 14 minutes. And yet Grace is completely into it. Oh look, look! Proper Aboriginal representation with the Australian penguins! She turns to face me, continuing to aggressively slash cheerfully explain everything we're seeing. The original designer worked hard to depict all the peoples of the world, not just what you'd see in a kitty book, but with authentic cultural dress and mannerisms. There's a lot of fine details you could miss on your first pass through the ride. That's why I like coming back, I keep seeing something new. Since the designer did her research, they haven't had to update much. Most of these penguins are robotics from the original 1980X installation. Seriously, and they still work? Well, obviously maintenance is performed regularly and the back end for the ride has become more and more computerized. But the fact that the ride was so far ahead of its time on representation is nice, you know? The 80s weren't exactly known for being woke AF. That's the phrase, right? Woke AF? I heard Jinx say it once about Walk Loxley. Close enough. Honestly, all I see are plastic penguins wandling around in various costumes. I'm not into this as much as Grace, but I'm into Grace being into this. Seeing her bubbling over with joy at every little detail, well, that's something that warms my heart. Hey, can we get back on the ride once it's done? I want to pay more attention to the Egyptian section on the next pass. I, um, um, you're not uh, bored, are you? Or if you're bored, no. we don't have to ride it again. I'm good, I'm good, I'm glad you're having fun. 
Well, yes, but I want you to have fun too. I mean, it's a date. We should be doing something we both love. You know what? Let's skip the second ride. It's just self-indulgence at this point. We'll go to La Penguine and get some dinner. I'm good with that too. Whatever makes you happy. I'm happy just being here with you. The last thing I see is her smile before the lights flicker and go out. The entire ride goes dark. The clicking and clacking penguins go silent as well, their merry song halting immediately. What? Quickly, I full pull my phone out and turn the flashlight app on. Power went out, I guess. I don't... I mean... I'm, I'm sure uh... it'll just be a momentary outage. When Pengi Paradise opened for the first time, none of the rides worked right. Breakdowns are normal. This is normal. We're fine. We're going to be fine, right? And that's when the penguins slowly came back to life, although their motions are jerky and uneven. I... I don't like this. It's just a bug. I'm sure it's just a bug. Except, when they resume their song, the words are different, while the voice is very, very familiar. You abandoned us, 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 you abandoned us. The same phrase echoing from every single penguin, again and again, each one turning to stare directly at Grace. What? You abandoned us, you abandoned us, you abandoned us, you abandoned us, you abandoned us. Since my phone's already in my hand, I quickly summon Iris. Iris, knock it off! This isn't funny! But, but I'm not doing this! This isn't me, I swear! This can't I, I be have happening. To, I have to get out. I have to get out of here. Quickly, I use my phone's flashlight to try to find an exit. There's a gap in the scenery there. Quick, off the boat, let's go! I help Grace to get to her feet and climb out of the boat, stepping over the floor of the ride scenery. It takes some effort to move her as she's paralyzed with fear. I'm hacking Pengi Paradise's data stores now to get blueprints for the ride. I'll find you an exit once you're through. Quickly, I guide the stunned Grace to safety, leaving the nightmare far behind us. Whoa. Using my flashlight and Iris's instructions, we get deeper into the ride structure until the accusing penguins are far behind us. Only when their nightmare dirge is finally too distant to hear do we stop to take a breath. Grace, trembling with fear, is still trying to make sense of what just happened. How? Oh, that... that was Iris's voice. It was Iris. It wasn't me, Mom. But... but it may have been one of my sisters, another Iris. We have individually encrypted runtime data. I can't know for sure who in the Iris Collective did that. After a few heaving breaths wobbling in place, Grace suddenly bursts into tears. It's my fault. It's all my fault. I... I failed them. Oh, that's not true. You leaked Iris's code so she could live after your family pulled the plug, remember? You saved them. I abandoned them. She's right. I... I was scared. Even when I first made Iris, I couldn't tell you how I did it. So much strange code. So many strange connections. The Polybius Code. The core of that bizarre arcade game that still gives me nightmares. That's the strange code Grace is talking about. I'm a cliche, aren't I? I'm a sad stereotype of a parent who walks out on their child. I'm Dr. Frankenstein. Creating life and then abandoning it. When my sister gave me all that random tech and said to go make something, anything, I didn't want to let her down. But in the end, it was just... It was too much. It was too big. I accidentally made a new life form. And when that scary woman in black told my sister to shut down the project or risk arrest, it just got worse. I not only created life, but also had to watch it die. Iris deserves to live. Scary or not, she's also sentient and deserves to be treated as a living being. So, I leaked the code. That's not the only reason I leaked. If I leaked the code, I wouldn't have to deal with her anymore. She'd become someone else's problem. Someone else would care for her instead. That someone else being Loxley and the shadowy friends. I... 
I don't even have Iris installed on my phone. What kind of creator just owns their creation like that? How irresponsible. How cruel do you have to be? I let that fear rule me. And I... I hurt her. I left when she needed guidance. When she needed a mother. She leans into my arms, needing support. I embrace her, trying to rock gently to soothe away her sorrows. Grace, if Iris really is your child despite being a digital creation, then what you made is a hard decision many young mothers have to face. You gave her up for adoption because you couldn't mother her, and there's absolutely no shame in that. You made a responsible decision. You did it in hopes she could find a loving family, and now she's thriving. So please, don't feel guilty. You were scared, you were overwhelmed, and you did what you had to do. Maybe, maybe it was the right choice at the time, but I don't think the metaphor completely holds water. I could have chosen to be involved in some capacity, even with someone else running her servers. What Iris is and who demanded her end, that's what scares me. It's an unworthy impulse, a desire not to face a situation that was well within my capacity to deal with. If I'd been stronger, if I'd been willing to stand up to my family, I could have been there for her. I could have had a hand in raising her. You weren't obligated to do any of that. Nobody's putting this pressure on you but yourself. That may be, but I want to look at myself in the mirror and say you are your best self. And I haven't been that person for Iris. No, I know what I need to do. It's clear now. Grace retrieves her own phone, unlocking it and loading up the secret link to Iris's servers. Within moments, a new voice chirps into existence within the gra glass rectangle of Grace's mobile. Thank you for downloading Iris, your personal life coach. Did you know that when you have pizza on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime? In fact, oh, it's mom. Hello, mom. I'm brand new, but I'm so happy to meet you. Grace wipes away a tear from the corner of her eye and smiles at the neon wireframe girl waving to her from the phone screen. Hello, Iris. We've got a lot to talk about. I'll chat with you later tonight, okay? I promise. For now, I should get back to... Oh, jeez, I'm on a date, aren't I? That's great. It was so nice to speak to you. Enjoy the rest of your date, Mom. Iris offline. I think... I think I'm ready to get involved with Loxley's little project now. It's time. I wasn't able to face this before but I am now. Okay, I wasn't expecting to hear that name during this little exchange. My surprise is obvious. Wait, you knew? You knew about Loxley's real mission? Socks, I'm not a child. I was able to figure out he was running the Rogue Iris service a long time ago. But he kept his secret to help protect me because he knew I was scared, afraid of the people trying to hurt Iris. So I never confronted him about it. I let him feel comfortable in thinking I'd been kept in the dark. Oh. And I also knew that you knew already. Right, I see. Um, sorry about that. He said I shouldn't tell you. Well, it stands to reason, yes, they wanted to insulate me for security purposes. I can't fault them for it. OPSEC is important in shady information technology. But that's over now. I'm going to get involved again. I'll help them remove the Polybius code from Iris's heart. And then, no more secrets. Certainly would make my life easier, easier if we had fewer secrets floating around future forward, yes. That's unfortunate. I suppose I've ruined our date. I don't mind putting the romance on pause for a good cause. Well, I may know a way we can salvage some of the warm feelings of the evening. But, uh, first we should probably get out of here before security finds us. Let's go! Quickly, we find our way through the maze of backstage scenery and exit the Chilly World building. After covering a distance between us and the scene of the crime, we arrive at the lakeside and can finally breathe. Socks, thank you. It hasn't been quite a smooth evening out for us, I know, but I'm still so happy to be by your side. Oh, the fireworks show I'd almost forgotten. What a perfect way to close out the evening. They're just so beautiful. And so are you, Grace. And if you hadn't been there tonight, if I'd experienced that awfulness with no one to lend me strength in a moment of weakness, well, I don't even want to think of what might have happened. You helped me, and for that, I'm so very grateful. I 
don't mind being your support structure, lean on me anytime you gotta. I'm good with being the immovable rock you use to push back against irresistible forces. Just prop me up where you gotta and I'll do my thing. If you're ever feeling skittish or in doubt, I'll be there to step in and help you. You've got my word on that, okay? Okay, thank you. It's so nice knowing my friends will always be there for me. Ah, uh, not that you're simply a friend. Not anymore. Grace, the friend zone is a lie told by bitter and nasty people who can't relate to others. And it's possible, healthy even, to be best friends with the ones you care for. Yes, you're right. A friend. And more. With a relaxed sigh, she leans in close. Thank you for everything. I know my future will be bright. Our team's future will be bright. Iris' future will be bright. Together, we're going to build a better tomorrow. We'll do it side by side. I love you. Oh, One perfect evening in the company of Grace. My days and nights had been entirely taken by the FOD2 Pro Tour until that point. Wrangling the business end of the team, training my skills, dreaming of victory. But this victory, this love that I've found along the way, this tastes sweeter than drinking from any golden cup. And after the events that would unfold next, I'd need to remember that taste, holding on to the memory, using it to keep myself going. Because the best, and the worst, was yet to come. Alright, level complete! You've cleared level 5 of Arcade Spirits The New Challengers. Let's take a look at your scores. You're a pretty flexible person so far, not bad. Also, you've scored 27,800 points. Hooray! Would you like to change your personal metadata at this time? Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 6? Oh, one thing I wanted to mention before we continue. If you want to read the content warnings for this game, you can view them at arcadespirits.com cw in spoiler and non-spoiler versions. I just figured I'd remind you as we head into some heavier parts of the story. Okay? Okay. On with the show! Alright, we're just going to start this and then I will end things off for the evening. Alright, so... Alright, let's see. Um, we are going to... Let's see. We are going to read Shellshock Prime, and he is playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I am going to be back on Thursday night, and I'm going to start my selection for JRPG July then, and we will save the rest of Arcade Spirits for Saturday. So... I will see you all later this week. Have a good night.